morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Money in the Morning. I'm Joe Salcihai, Average Show Money on Twitter. And what a glorious day here in the basement. Mom's working hard upstairs, which means we're pretending like we're working hard down here. But seriously, we have got some great headlines today. Number one, we're going to talk about megatrends. Recent article talking about this idea of investing in trends that don't need a bull market. Bull market stops. Still got the trend. Is that a good idea? We'll talk about that. And another another person suing their 401k. We'll see how that went. Today's Money in the Morning brought to you by the Stacky Benjamins Experience. Get in because the price is going up. We have uh, only 30 spots available total. Get your money nerd on, put your financial plan together. How great is it going to be to realize that you took control of 2018 by investing in yourself. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash experience for more on that. You're busy. We're busy. Let's get it going. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show. Our Stacking Benjamins headlines. First headline comes to us from Market Watch. This is written by Jeff Reeves. Invest in five megatrends that can pay off without a bull market in stocks. Investors often pay too much attention to the short term and overlook lasting long-term trends that ultimately matter more to their portfolio. Sure, the recent government shutdown fight was difficult to ignore. And yes, it's hard to look away from the volatility in Bitcoin. However, the best investments you can make tend to rely on big picture trends, not the latest fashionable headlines. This kind of mega trend investing where investors follow durable trends over many years requires foresight and patience. But when done right, the gains can be dramatic. Best of all, investors can often tap into powerful changes in the global economy that don't rely on a broader bull market to deliver substantial profits. Let's talk about what Mr. Reeves is suggesting here, which is that we can uh, forget about maybe index investing or maybe forget about uh, what's going on in the market today. And instead, just look at these big ideas, these big heady ideas and make money in those ideas. And I think, I think for me, he uses two terms in, in this piece, which say that it's going to be difficult for us to do that. The first one is foresight. It's very, very difficult to predict which one of these trends is going to be the next trend. As an example, it was only, uh, what, a um, uh, year and a half ago that we were talking a lot. We we're talking a lot about marijuana stocks, weren't we? That that was going to be the trend. And certainly marijuana investments haven't got away. Marijuana uh, industry hasn't got away. But look at the whole, look at the landscape. Now, I never read, I never, ever read about that trend anymore. Instead, now we're on to the next hot thing. So when he talks about investors pay attention to the short term, looking at that, looking at these trends does require us to stop paying attention to all the, the, the stuff that's in the headlines and instead say, okay, long term, where is this headed? And certainly the landscape's changed to take marijuana as an example has changed. New administration, not as uh, friendly to the marijuana industry. So that um, that has proven a little more difficult for those those positions. But let's take a look at some of the trends that, that he talks about in this piece. Uh, first one is industrial automation. He says in the 21st century, American manufacturing jobs aren't really being stolen by low wage workers in China. They're being taken by robots. Boy, I'll tell you, that's true. My dad was a GM guy his entire career. And now he um, part time, just a few hours a month, uh, goes in for a supplier into a GM facility. And over the holiday season last year, he took me to a General Motors plant near Cleveland. And it was amazing. This, this plant, and I remember going in with when I was a kid with my dad, the people all over the place. Now there was nobody. I mean, there were very, very few people except on the final assembly line. And it was people mostly watching robots work. So I can clearly see that, that, is, that that's a trend uh, uh, to follow. Um, and, and not that my, my I walked through a plate with my dad once, so I'm sure that's a trend. Well, we can see it anyway. We certainly see, uh, we've seen that not just with automotive, have we? We're even seeing it in fast food at, at the at the airport, going up to a kiosk at a McDonald's, replacing the front counter worker. I mean, there's automation taking place all over 
Second one that he lists here is an aging society. Much attention being paid to the graying of America with a widely, widely touted fact the number of Americans age 65 and older will double to almost 100 million across the next four decades or so. But our nation's hardly alone as advances in modern medicine and increased standards of living raise life expectancies around the world. This is another one. Third is self-driving cars. Fourth is infrastructure. In 2017, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave America's infrastructure an ugly D-plus grade. So we're going to have to do something there. Uh, some of the horror stories on bridges in America. And then last is one that we saw at the end of the big short. Uh, what, what was it? Was that last year? The year before? It all seems to blend together. But at the end of that movie, the big short, they're talking about water, right? And the lots of news on the waterfront and water space front, not news on the, on, on the beach. Uh, lots of, lots of news there. So, so these trends, if we want to get involved, how do we invest? I think that, I think that when it comes to the trend, we've got a couple things that we should think about. Number one is what's my ability to pick a trend? Certainly, you know, we can all nod our head and go these trends that Jeff Reeves lists in this piece. These are some, these are some nice ideas, but that's just the starting point. If we're going to go deeper on the trend, I want to look at the numbers and I want to have an approach to how I invest in these. And I think the takeaway is for a lot of people, it's best to stick with an investment strategy that is more durable, which means a long-term asset allocation. Forget about the trend because when the trend ends, you can promise yourself you're probably going to be too busy doing something else to notice that the trend is over and you should have gotten out. I can't tell you the number of times I've met trend investors that uh, later on I am talking to them and I, why do you own this? Oh, well, this was the hot trend. How come you haven't sold it yet? This thing happened six months ago and now it, it, everything's kind of changed. Oh, I, uh, I, I got busy doing something else. So uh, stick with a much more durable long-term asset allocation, much more well-rounded, That'll catch the trend, right? The S&P 500 will catch the trend. The total stock market index will catch the trend with a higher weighting toward stocks that are, um, that are companies that are, that are bigger. So that's a much safer way to go. If you really want to invest in these trends, like I have a position in water, I use a strategy called a core sandbox approach. And so I've got most of my, most of my portfolio is the core. And then these trend ideas that I like are a little sandbox. And I know the sandbox is going to go up and down much, much more aggressively. These are ideas that I really like. Um, and, and, and I'm, much more comfortable with losses in that portfolio than I am the core. I don't think I'm going to bet everything on some idea I read in the paper uh, and hope like heck that that works out. Big hello to everybody between uh, segments here uh, that's following us on Facebook Live. If you're listening to the show, we record these live with a Facebook audience. And it's always a little nerve wracking doing it live because you never know what the heck's going to happen. And especially when uh, things get crazy here in the basement, like they have from time to time, you just don't know, but, uh, but a big hello to everybody uh, who's hanging out with us this morning. A second headline comes to us from Napa dash net, the national association of plan advisors, another 401 K lawsuit, people suing their retirement plan, man, we've talked about this a lot on the stacking Benjamin show lately, haven't we? Uh, excessive fee claims rejected in Capital Group case. This written by Nevin Adams says Capital Group has prevailed in an excessive fee suit brought by a participant in the money manager's 401k plan with the judge noting that, quote, fiduciaries need not choose the cheapest fees available to the exclusion of other considerations, end quote. I think that's a huge, huge point. We're going to get back together with that. This suit brought by Deanne Patterson against Capital Group on behalf of herself and the 7,000 participants and beneficiaries of the $3 billion plan alleged that, quote, during the relevant period between 94.7% and 97.8% of all investment op options offered by the plan 
were on duly expensive capital group affiliated investment options and that these investment options were not selected and retained as a result of an impartial or prudent process, but were selected and retained by the committee because capital group and subsidiaries benefited financially from their inclusion in the plan. What does that mean? That means that 401k providers often have a select group of funds that they like best and they do they do like them because of compensation sharing agreements. So as an example, if I've got a 401k uh, offered by Oppenheimer Group, it's going to include a lot of Oppenheimer funds. Why? Because they're Oppenheimer funds. But there's another piece to this, which is really important. If Oppenheimer Group offers a 401k that has mostly Oppenheimer funds, it's much easier for them to take responsibility for any problems that come up any worries that they have. It's easier to make changes. I don't have to go to a third party, easier to swap out. So there's that consideration also. And in this case, in this case, the, uh, the judge ruled that, you know what, these other considerations besides fees are very important. And I think that's, I think it's important for all of us is that fees are a very important part of investing, making sure that you've got low fee choices, but when we're dumping everything at the, at the altar of low fees, well, certainly, I, I don't know that we're going to always have the, the best results. I mean, it's the easiest way to get a good result, right? Making sure that we low, lower the fee. But frankly, the number of people I've seen in my life that worry about fees, and then I take a look at how much they're actually saving, I look at their budget, their financial picture is a mess, and they're busy fighting the fee game doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Also, when uh, we've had people on talking about the wealthiest investors in the world, none of those, none, none with a capital N of those investors talk about low fees. They talk about opportunities. They talk about calculated risk. They talk about understanding markets. They talk about, about, um, about knowing what they're doing. They don't talk about low fees. Not saying low fees aren't important. Low fees very important, but I think our second takeaway is fees are important, but not the only factor. I think that the judge, uh, I mean, I don't know enough about this to know if the judge got it right, but I do think that the judge had an interesting, uh, interesting um, uh, analysis of this particular case. All right, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Go stack lots of Benjamins. We'll see you next time on Money in the Morning. Money in the Morning is created by Joe Saul Cihai and is brought to our channels by our producer and engineer, Richie Rutter Reese. Stacking Benjamins and Money in the Morning are for entertainment purposes. Before making moves, consult with your financial advisor. Looking for training sessions? Kathleen Sullivan's has a great suite of Stacking Benjamins tools, so head on over to learn.stackingbenjamins.com. Hoping to chat with us on the web? Say hello to Shannon Cowan, our social media guru and community manager in our Facebook group. She can be found at stackingbenjamins.com forward slash basement. From the basement, I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. See you tomorrow.